that was it was it uh, again anybody get a chance to go see go see the, a show because this one or just was, go see yeah. my netflix special yeah, so I go, yeah. you can see yeah. that thing yeah now you got to pay I more did. for netflix now yeah what is it like 10 bucks yeah 17 percent more i think they're gonna charge is it really yeah they yeah. can yeah they're yeah. good so. they have so much good shit though yeah. Like, if you want to just waste your life and sit in front of the TV, <laughs> it's crazy. Like, when we were kids- Maybe you that's know, your passion. We, so you get that universal basic yes. income, and my following my passion means I got to sit and right. watch every episode of uh, Andy and Griffith. just yeah. fart under the sheets. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of people doing that right now. I don't know if that's bad. Is, I mean, yes, it is, but then doesn't that open the door for the the people that aren't going to be like that? Like, look, less people out there really actually trying to get ahead. I think the people that are going to try to succeed are always going to try to succeed. I think that's true, and I think so. I think that's maybe that's an argument against it, also, which is that like I don't think it's going to unlock a, a, a whole treasure trove of innovators, right? If suddenly you give people money and say, "Okay, you don't have to go uh, pour coffee or, or flip burgers or you know uh, clean up that road or whatever you're going to do for a living." You can follow your passion. I don't think we're going to find some exponential increase in the number of people inventing the wheel. I just think mm. that it's just going to be a lot more people farting under the blankets or something. I don't know. Maybe, you might be you know. right, but w the only good that I think could come out of it is that less people are in abject poverty and less people are desperate, so it might reduce crime. You might have lazy people, but you might also have less people that are inclined to steal things or do something that's illegal mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because their basic needs are taken care of. Yeah, that's, food, a, that's a valid point. I read something that it stunned me. I was, I was on the plane flying to, uh, to L.A., um, and I read an article about this, this strike, right? The teacher the strike. Teacher sorry, strike. The te yeah. here in Los Angeles. Big strike, Los Angeles Unified uh, School Authority or whatever it's called. And... It was just before they, they went on strike, but it talked about the problems that the school district has. And I don't know whether this statistic is right. I read it numerous times because I was so surprised by it. 80% of the uh, families that use the Los Angeles public school system are at the poverty level or right. below. And... That means, of course, also that they rely on the free meal assistance, right, yeah. that the schools provide, which is kind of what the point of the story was. Like, the schools are closed right now, and so, you know, kids aren't getting a chance to eat because they, that's their only chance to get to eat. Right. right. But that number was stunning. That's crazy. Right. Uh, so I don't I, – I, I meant to look into it and do more research to see whether the article is actually correct or not. But, hey, it was in the newspaper, so it must be true, right? right? Mm, mm. I don't know about that. Anyway, uh, yeah. That's Peach. a disturbing number. It's a very disturbing number. But it also talked about how 12%, I think 12% of all kids that go to high school here in Los Angeles then go on to college, 12%. And uh, it, it was uh, a similar number that never get out of high school. And it's even worse in a place like New York City, public schools. So I guess the point being is a you know, public school system is... is it's dog shit. Yeah. And in, in, in the larger urban centers, it's got some real problems. And I think a lot of those people that are the really sad things, a lot of those people that are at the poverty line or below work hard. It's not a, a lack mm -hmm. of motivation. It's they just don't have opportunities. They don't know what to do. They're not doing it the right way. They don't have guidance. They never learned correctly when they were young. Right. Maybe single they're parent. They've worked two parents. or three jobs. Yeah. Um, yeah. And no, but, I, but look, California's got all sorts of interesting issues. I mean, there's, uh, you know, I. I talking to some folks and they said uh, a quarter of the nation's homeless people live here in California. <laughs> 25% of the nation's homeless people live in California. Smart and, place to live. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah. I mean, it's raining it. the last few days, <laughs> yeah. but most of the time, it's, it's beautiful, beautiful weather. Out. Hey, you can't complain about the weather anyway. That's but crazy. That is crazy. And, and it also talked about how a lot of those people, they work, but they're homeless, right? The cost of housing. And so you've got people that have a job, but they're living in their cars, right? Because... They can't afford housing, whether it's in San Francisco or San Los Francisco Angeles or wherever. It's insanity. Yeah, that is no. that place is insanity. So the your point about boom. the basic universal income, I, I take that point. I, yeah. I see what that, the, you know, if it was possible to pay for it, and uh, and again, you know, kind of do this thing where you you're monitoring this issue of motivation, so you're not creating another follow-on generation of right. just complete slack asses. Then I think that's it. That's a really valid point. I, my w concern would be people that didn't appreciate it and people that felt entitled. 
like they felt like someone owed yeah. them that money. Yeah. You know, and you're going to have that. I mean, this is the this is the biggest problem that people have with socialism and socialist attitudes is that some of these kids that are coming up right now, they look at what they call income inequality. What they don't look at is effort inequality. Like yeah. some people put in more fucking work. Yeah. It's not and and are th smarter. They've figured their way through the game better than you have. Yeah, and I've they've never, been I've, doing it for fifty years or whatever they've been right, doing it for. Right, it's not. Yeah. It's, I, I I couldn't agree with you more in the sense that I I never uh, begrudged anybody. I never got pissed off with a rich person because they were rich. Right. I'm thinking, hey, that's good. I'd like to be rich. Right. Right. So I might want to talk and find out, hey, you know, how'd you do it or how'd you do it? And yeah, it's a system sometimes you know set up so that once you have some money, you can get more money. Well, of course the fuck it is. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, if I have some money, I can invest that money and make more money. Yeah. You know, if I'm smart about it. If but you do it right. Yeah. If you do it right. But I absolutely, I don't. You know, I don't begrudge the idea. That's and so that's part of it is also. I'm fairly steeped in the idea that, you know, we're living in a very uh, unique country, right? And and I do worry sometimes that that uh, people don't, you know, they, I, I, you know, even family, and I've got some friends and others who, who are just constantly pissing and moaning about this place, right? And I'm thinking, I spent almost all my life over in shitholes around the world, and I, there is no other place I would rather be as a country. And I know that's, you know, it's jingoistic or whatever, but... Uh, honest to God, I, I still believe. And if you go someplace and you talk to somebody in, in some fifth world, they will also, my experience has been anyway, uh, maybe you're listening and your experience is different, but that's the way it works, uh, is that they'll think, if I go to America, if I can get to America and I work hard, I can, I, I can be successful. And that, I think, is still true. And that's what I worry about with entitlements and things yeah. that, that may kill that belief. And you're right, income inequality. Yeah, you know, that's but it's y you're right. You work harder. Now it doesn't always happen, but life's not supposed to be fair. It's, not, well, it's maybe it's supposed to be fair, but it's not fair. So, sorry. life is just supposed to be life. life. It's definitely yeah. not fair. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, I I completely see your point, and and I and I agree with it. I I think that the real concern is that people don't appreciate already how great they have and what incredible opportunity they have. And if we, incre we, we, we give them more benefits with less effort, then you're going to develop more of this attitude that we find disturbing, which is people that don't have an appreciation for literally the greatest experiment in self-government the world has ever known. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, 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 but I think also that there's, there's, Parts of it that need to be looked at, like there's a, there's an interesting study about uh, uh, about college and um, graduation rates from college for um, for uh, disadvantaged folks, you know, and that was again why they made it easier for you know tuition assistance, right? So the idea was we want to expand the college ability for everybody, which is a great idea, right? But what they found was they expanded the the the, the, the college opportunity for everybody. But over the past decade, decade and a half, fewer people from the lower income uh, uh, categories have been graduating, right? So you've, you, what you've done is you said, come on in. It's like, you know, mm. it's like uh, special operators, right? If, if, if you lower the bar, right? right? Um, and this is where I'm going to get in trouble probably. I'll talk about the Marines and, you know, allowing women into combat <gasps> elements. I know. Oh, my God. Well, what do they do? Well, you, you lower the bar. You, you, you make it – okay, well, we, not enough of them could get through the course. So I'm going to change the regulations, yeah. right? And so if you change the regulations, what they found with the college was if you, if you increase that pool of people going, it doesn't mean that they're going to be successful, right? And now what you've done is you've kind of saddled them with some college debt, and they, they didn't graduate. So they're still earning what a high school, you know, graduate earns, and that, and, and the, the system doesn't work. And so I think sometimes just the idea of throwing money at the problem or or, or it, it doesn't it, it's not helpful if we don't think it through and then assess the results. So, but yeah, that 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 whole marine experiment. Uh, I think they're they're catching it late in the chain, and I think it's good to give people the opportunity to succeed and to advance themselves. But if you really want to address it as a systemic problem, you got to get to the root of it, which is these unbelievably horrible neighborhoods and these these toxic environments that these kids are growing up and being abused and being scared and bullied and t terrible piss poor education. You know, first through all the way yeah. up to high school. That's, I mean, that's really where you have to address it. I mean, addressing it just at the college level and giving them the opportunity to get into college and making it easier for them, it doesn't, 
negate the terrible foundation that's been laid by their life. Right. Yeah, and I think that's we we had this idea that that college should be for everybody, right? Yeah. And that's okay. That's great. And that's I think that's where the you know people like uh, Cortez and Bernie Sanders and others with their idea of, of free tuition. Yes. You know they're thinking, okay, well, look at Europe. You know, some countries in Europe have free tuition, and hey, it's you know it's relatively prosperous, and there's nothing wrong with that. But at right. the same time, you know, I I think we we don't. We, I, we don't assess the cost and the overall efficiency of an idea sometimes. And so we just assume and, and you know, open it up, let everybody go, and somehow this is going to work, right, to our advantage. And the honest to God answer is no. You know, I think somebody is better off sometimes, you know, going to, you know, becoming a plumber. Right? Yeah. You know, maybe, maybe. It's an honorable living. It's you a know, great a of, living. Great yeah. trades. It's a great living. One yeah. of the happiest guys I know is my plumber in Boise. That guy is, I mean, he's got it knocked, right? He's always out for hunting season. And, you know, he'll call, I'll say, look, I got a, I got a leak, right? I'm a, my ceiling's about to cave in. He goes, well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going hunting. <laughs> I'm sorry. He's just got he, he's got his own schedule, 